reading from the sixth chapter of Luke. Jesus went down with them and stood on a level place. A crowd of disciples was there and a number of people from all over Judea, from Jerusalem, the coast of Tyre and Sidon, had come to hear him to be healed of their diseases. Those troubled with evil spirits were cured. The people all tried to touch him because power came from him and healing them all. He looked at his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor. Yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who hunger now, for you will be satisfied. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when men hate you, when they exclude you and insult you and reject you in my name. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy, because great is your reward in heaven. For that is how their fathers treated the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, or you who have already received your comfort. Woe to you who are well fed now, for you will go hungry. Woe to you who laugh now, for you will mourn and you will weep. Woe to you when all men speak well of you, for that is how their fathers treated the false prophets. The word from the Lord in the house of the Lord. I, I don't take a moment of personal privilege. Uh, some weeks get kind of filled up with things. And this week I took part in the services for two men who were very proud of their service. M many of you knew Frank Holmes. And Frank always wore his veteran's cap. And if he saw somebody else with any kind of military regalia on, he struck up a conversation. It took him a minute or so to have a bosom buddy that he had never ever seen before and he took that with him throughout his life he loved his he loved the army time in the army and then yesterday i participated in the service for a a retired major who had been uh, selected as outstanding soldier of the month several times while he was stationed in germany and it if you let me reminisce a little when I was doing my duty and serving, protecting each of you from Port Chaffee, Arkansas, <laughs> you notice not a thing happened to you. Nothing came out of the Ozarks. I was off duty one day and I was standing at the front gate of the post waiting for the bus to take a ride into Fort Smith, Arkansas, where I was going to have a, a probably a chocolate milk or some other such beverage while I was in the army there. <laughs> And I was there in civilian clothes, and this car, this sedan came up with two stars on the front bumper. Anybody been in the Army? You know what two stars on the front bumper means. A big time general. Well, being a good soldier, I just popped in one of these, and the car stopped. And I thought, oh, this is going to be good. <laughs> he stepped out of the car and said, you going to town, soldier? And I said, yes, sir. He said, get in. So we're driving down the road to Fort Smith about nine miles away and a cow was beside the road and I still remember the general saying, driver, don't hit that cow. If you kill that cow, it'll become the sole support of a widow and 14 children. <laughs> First time I ever heard a general with a sense of humor. <laughs> I guess that has nothing to do with it. Just know that the, the day we interred Frank, it was 12 degrees above zero. It was cold in the Midwest. We drove in in whiteout conditions on a couple of spots, and there was ice on the roads, and there was snow blowing, and, it, and I ain't ever going back. <laughs> Jesus said, woe to those who have it made, because you're so invested in what you have and what you are that you can't let go. You heard me read those words, right? No. I don't ever... They, he doesn't talk the way we talk. He doesn't speak the way we speak. But he tells the story that we need to hear, that we need to be very clear about hearing. And he meant it when he said, woe unto those who've got it made. Because you can't let go of it. And that's the terrible thing to think about. He said, blessed are those who weep because you'll quit someday. We cry because we hurt. But hurt isn't forever. And we can look back and laugh. 
at the life we've had. Every one of us has hundreds and hundreds of moments when things were so wonderful, things were so good that we couldn't help but laugh. And even now, as we get older, we find it hard to laugh because our dentures fall out. But, <laughs> but we can at least smile broadly. <laughs> and what brings us great joy now? Uh, it's not the things we can touch. It's not the things we try to own. It's not things, but it's the love of each other. And that's very much what he said to them, that, that blessed will be those who suffer today because someone will make it better tomorrow. Somehow it will be better than it was today because we can't afford to hang on to troubles. The way he talks in this sermon, well, the, the only thing worse than hanging on to your troubles is not having any troubles to hang on to. For if you haven't made, if everything is perfect, why do you need anything else? Yeah, he says, be, be careful of the people who praise you because they do the same thing to liars, to the false prophets, to the ones who tell you everything is fine, everything is wonderful. Even this, the scripture, of the, the epistle that was read today is about if we don't believe in the resurrection, what are we doing here? I, that's the way I heard it. Maybe you, didn't, maybe you heard it differently. But if we don't believe that Christ was raised from the dead by the God who loves us, then what else have we got to hang on to? We're, we're pretty temporary. But God is permanent. We're, we're fragile and God is solid. We're breakable. And God is impenetrable. So when Jesus said, those of you who mourn, you'll be comforted. Yes. Time heals things like that. But even more important than that is, is the relationship of the people around you. The ones who are able to love in the name of Christ. The ones who are able to love in the name of God. The ones who will set aside any kinds of petty differences, any kind of, of spats and so forth that they might have just to let you know that you are loved. You'll be comforted. But oh, woe unto those who got it made. Because you're going to hang on to that to the exclusion of everyone else. And I don't mean having a car, having a house, having money in your pocket is a bad thing, but if that's the only thing that's important, if that's the only thing that holds you together, then you're missing out on being loved by Christ. You're just too busy counting your dollars to count your blessings. Now, I thought, so I, when I was a kid, when I was younger, I thought, that's my blessings right there, and it ain't. I'm tempted to throw it away just to demonstrate, but I'm not that foolish. <laughs> Fooled you, didn't I? <laughs> yeah. Statistics say that the money I've got in my, prop, my pocket makes me among the two or three percent of the richest people in the world. But you know who's even richer than the one with money in their pocket? It's the one who's surrounded by friends. The ones who are surrounded by true, actual love. Not fake stuff. And not just family, but those in the family of God who know how to love totally, absolutely, completely. Oh, you're wealthy. You're rich. You understand the value of that which is invaluable. You understand the value of being close. Close to God, close to God's people, close to each other. I watched Arlene's family rally around her this past week. The grandkids, the great-grandkids and the kids who loved her. Yes, yeah, she lost Frank. But she didn't lose hope, love, value, anything else. And she didn't lose Frank. 
People are with us through eternity if we're willing to remember that there is a resurrection and the resurrection is a gift from God and the resurrection is a gift to you that is waiting you through all eternity. That's what Jesus preached. He said a lot of different words. But woe to the one who's got it made. You'll never know love. When things are more important than people, when things are more important than love, when things are more important than anything else in your life, you're going to lose everything that's important in your life. We see it often. We live it often. And the wonder of wonders is that tomorrow God will still be there. God will still love us. The resurrection will still be the promise that is irrefutable, and it will be yours for eternity unless you've got it so made that you can't hear him speak to you. Woe unto the one who got it made, but blessings on the one who suffers because you will be healed. You'll be made happy. You'll be made to laugh again. Even generals have a sense of humor. Even generals can laugh. Even I, even I can laugh. Because he loves me more than I love this. Oh, I hope so. I hope so. Amen. Amen. We closed the service on Tuesday with the way we close our service here. It was something brand new to that church. But from the comments I heard, it may become part of their ritual as well. But what got them the most was when I asked them during the singing of Let There Be Peace on Earth to touch each other was a new concept. So go in peace. Go in peace touching each other with your hearts, with your very souls. Because with love comes the resurrection. With resurrection comes hope. With hope comes peace. Amen.